So this is the 5G Rural First project. It's a Cisco UK and Ireland led project with Cisco services delivering connectivity uh, to some of the unconnected parts of the UK. It's a collaborative project between the private sector industry like Cisco, Parla Wireless, Data Vita, and a range of academic partners and a range of public sector organisations, including the UK government, who are part funding. We have four different test sites. Cisco Packet Core in Glasgow, near Glasgow. Some IoT and consumer mobile broadband in Orkney Islands. The Orkney Islands being officially the worst connected part of the UK. And also a few agricultural sites down in the south of England. Again, relatively poor coverage of mobile technologies there. Our proposal is that the service provider needs to find ways to drive down the cost of the networks and raise up the revenue opportunities. So we have a range of different use cases. One thing you might not be aware of, in the UK the biggest export, food export from Scotland is salmon, farmed salmon. What's the biggest food export from the UK? It's actually farmed salmon as well. And that's a high-tech, connectivity starved industry. So from an economic point of view in the country, there's a great business opportunity to provide the right kind of connectivity that the salmon farms need. We have other use cases, for example, transport. I'll show you one with the ferry with a, a 32 gigahertz radio, uh, and also augmented reality for the tourist industry. Let's go and look at some of the applications. One of the most interesting applications One of the most interesting applications is automated farming. So what we have here is a autonomous tractor being directed by a drone where to spray fertilizer. A couple of technical challenges of this and let's talk about them. So this is running a 3.5 gigahertz radio, a disaggregated stack, AW2S hardware and a Marisoft stack. The drone analyzes the field for low nitrogen content in the soil. It then sends that information up to the cloud. That's the first 5G challenge, the upload speed. The download speed in our case is not a constraint, it's the upload speed. The cloud then tells the tractor where to go. The tractor also has to detect obstacles. People, for example, that might walk out into the path of the tractor. So that's done with 4K videos and people detection software, which you can see up the top there. Okay. Here's the second 5G aspect of this use case. And it's a genuinely low latency requirement. The tractor's driving along at 20 miles an hour. It comes to the right part of the field that needs fertilized. The cloud application signals, I want you to put fertilizer here and tells the tractor to turn on the fertilizer spray. If the network is too slow, if it can't meet the latency requirements, the fertilizer gets sprayed in the wrong part of the field and the farmer is no better off. If the network is fast enough, the fertilizer spray goes on accurately and we only need to fertilize those parts of the soil where it needs it. So we're saving environmental benefit, we're saving cost for fertilizer, big productivity benefit for the farmer. If the farm has connectivity, which in many parts of the UK, 83% of farms can't get a 4G signal. So this is all about how do we enable connectivity in the, the rural areas. Let's go and look at some other examples. So one area we're doing in Orkney is with Parallel Wireless and I'm absolutely delighted to say that with Parallel Wireless, with Shifa, with University of Strathclyde, with Data Vita and Cisco and CloudNet or ISP, we are bringing connectivity to villages which have never had the mobile internet before ever. We're doing it with a parallel wireless disaggregated radio with our HetNet gateway in the Data Vita data center and a tiny little radio on a mast in the Orkney Islands. We're providing that to seven sites delivering the mobile internet for the first time ever. That is just that's a fantastic thing to be doing and it's delighted to be working with parallel wireless on that. We've also got some really
really interesting uh, transport use cases. For example, and I mentioned this one earlier, so parallel wireless, we're doing that at 700 megahertz, the Amarasoft at 3.5 gigahertz. In this particular ferry use case, normally it would be 26, but we're actually, for various reasons, operating this at 32 gigahertz with a phaser 5G radio to deliver connectivity to a ferry between the islands of Orkney. That's going to be used for operational reasons on the ferry and also as a backhaul for Wi-Fi for passenger traffic. So we're actually just in the process of deploying this in the Orkney Islands in the next couple of weeks. We've got the base connectivity going. Next stage is to get those 5G applications going. This is done with a fantastic ecosystem of partners. Delivered by the Cisco Customer Experience Organization, helping us make sure we hit the time schedule. We had some real challenges with product delivery. These guys gave us not only a plan A, but a plan B and a plan C to let us hit the use case testing. We've got an incredible list of partners on this project. University of Strathclyde are the principal partner with Cisco Leading. Some funding from the government, not, not all funding, but just part funding. Uh, we've got, for example, BT doing an interesting use case with an Accelerant and small cell. CloudNet are our ISP in Orkney. They're the ones that have deployed all the parallel wireless and phase of radios. The 5G packet core is in the Data Vita Center, uh, Data Vita Tier 3 Data Center in Central Scotland. And we've got a range of really innovative agricultural companies, for example, Connected Cows with the IoT collar from Affymilk. Right, we'll show you that use case next. We've got the BBC doing broadcast over 5G, that is multicast EMBS broadcast essentially. We've got a specialist like Lime Microsystems on the software defined radio. Parallel Wireless, again, doing a fantastic job. Pure Wi Fi, what are they doing? They are doing fixed wireless access with zero radio spectrum without a tower delivering up to gigabit a second speed potentially to residents on the Isle of Gramsay which has no internet connectivity whatsoever. Okay. Doing some interesting stuff with TIP. And we're doing a local user plane deployed in structure to deliver us that low latency for the agricultural use case. We also have the connected cows where we've got an IoT application being collected I think it's over Zigbee, uh, again transported across the parallel wireless radio network into the Cisco 5G packet core. That will tell the farmer how to improve the productivity of the agriculture, how to get the cows pregnant earlier, how to improve the yield from the cows, how to monitor their health, how to make sure they're feeding okay, and how to keep the cows happy and productive. So again, great revenue opportunity. And the question for the service provider here is, what do they charge for the connectivity or the app? Talking of apps, one of the apps is we've got a really cool augmented reality app for tourism in Orkney. I'm going to show you that just now. Hopefully this will work. So the Orkney Islands are a tourist hotspot, 20,000 population, 340,000 tourists a year. How does the island cope with that level of visitors, okay? So I've got the augmented reality app. We're going to have a virtual tourist guide. The virtual tourist guide will, and just the background again is, this is a, a, a tourist hotspot. It's a very small group of islands. They have 20,000 population, but they get 340,000 tourists a year. So what we need is somebody to help them. Let's see, if you just come around here, let's see. I need to be quite far away from it, to be honest. Do you want to take a step back? Right. right. So what he's doing is explaining the history of some of these tourist sites that have got no no people there to help you guide you what it is. The War Rocks, yeah, yeah. Absolute rocks, right? Absolute rocks, right? Absolute rocks. That's incredible. So, I'll show you some of this. I'll show you a picture. 
Right. This is the Ringer Brodgar. It's four and a half thousand years old. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Right? Boom, right there. It's, there's nobody there. Right. Right? You go west of that, next stop, Canada. Right? The middle of nowhere. This has got a real problem, this site. Number one, there's nobody there to explain what it is. And if you don't, if you haven't done your research, you go and you say, right, it's a couple of stones. This app will tell you, those little people will tell you all the history. The next rev of the app will solve the next problem, parking. This island is overloaded and the customer experience is very poor now because they get so many people. But often what happens is you get you get a thousand people going here. There's only space for a hundred cars. So we'll help spread the load with the app and tell them where the quiet points in the island are. So this is about how technology, including the augmented reality and the Cisco network, will help improve the tourist experience in a four and a half thousand year old tourist site. That's impressive. So that's five to euro first, beyond the city connectivity. So I'd like to say thanks to Zahid and the 3G, 4G blog. I think it's the best mobile industry blog on the planet. Go have a look at it. Thanks very much, Zahid.